بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولاه ما بعد. This is our first lesson going through the book تلخيص فقه الفرائض. Authored by فضيلة الشيخ العلامة محمد بن صالح بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى. This is a book tackling the field of الفرائض. The field of inheritance. And the field of inheritance is a very important science that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detailed the concepts of al-fara'il in the Quran in many verses. Well, in, I wouldn't say many, but in three key verses that are very long verses. In Surah An-Nisa, يُصِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أُولَادِكُمْ وَلَكُمْ نِسُ مَا تَرَكْ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ And the final verse, يَسْتَفْتُونَكَ قُلِ اللَّهُ يُفْتِيكُمْ فِي الْكَلَالَ And so these three verses are the cornerstone by which this science is built upon. And this science is very easy. It's a very easy science. Inshallah ta'ala will see it be in the ta'ala that it's very very simple. All you need is to have an understanding, an open mind, and a brief, a small understanding of basic mathematics, basic fractions and basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's all you need. ta'ala. It's not as difficult as people claim it to be. And this book is a very nice primer, it's a very nice beginner. That allows you to gain ummahat al masai to understand the the um, main points when it comes to the science and and this is uh, this is how the Musannif ibn Uthaymin rahimah Allah ta'ala is and this is why he is one of the aima of, of, of our time because uh, he made ilm very very easy and very very palatable to the beginning student of of knowledge. طيب. and this book he authored it for high school students so it shouldn't be very difficult. We alhamdulillah passed high school. So it should be very, uh, not that difficult for us. He wrote it for first year high school students, as you will see in the introduction. طيب. And so we'll take it easy, simply, with a lot of examples, inshallah ta'ala, to make it, to make the concepts clear, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. طيب. قال المصنف رحمه الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. He begins with the basmala, as is the, as is the norm with, uh, when we author works. Uh, the Quran begins with the basmala, as we know. Likewise, there is the rasail, that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to send to the kings of the world, will begin with the basmala. Then he began with Alhamdulillah and began with Khubat al-Hajjah by saying Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa natubu ilayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina wa sayyati a'malina wa man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan wa sallama tasliman mazida wa sallama taslima wa ba'd and so he began with Khubat al-Hajjah which is of course the common Khubat that you hear at the beginning of every single Friday sermon or most Friday sermons. Then he mentions the purpose behind authoring this work. فَهَذِهِ رِسَالَةُ مُخْتَصَرَةُ فِي عِلْمِ الْفَرَائِضِ حَسْبَ الْمَنْهَجِ الْجَدِيدِ الْمُقَرَّرِ لِسَنَةِ الْأُولَى الثَّانَوِي As I mentioned, he wrote this book solely for who? For the new syllabus for first year high school students. For first year high school students. And the equivalent to high, first year high school students is AS level here. In this country, in the UK, AS level. So the first year of, of college is the same thing. Same as them, uh, their first year of of uh, or you could say even hatta maybe um, year 11 of high school here is the same as ula thanawi there ra'aytu fiha suhulat at-ta'bir ma'a li dhahib al-amthalat wa samaytuha tarkhis fi qil faraid wa asal Allah ta'ala yaj'al amali khalisan li wajhihi lahu nafi'an li 'ibadihi innahu jawadun karim and so he mentioned that that this book is going to be that he took care he gave great care to making it simple to understand to make it easy to understand and by clarifying the masail with what with examples, bil mithal yatadh al maqal, and that's how we're going to follow, insha'Allah Taala, the manhaj of the Sheikh, rahimahullah Taala. The first point that the Musannif rahimahullah Taala begins with is ta'rif al fara'id, the definition of al fara'id. Al fara'id, the ikhwan, jamu fariida, and the wazn is fa'ila, طيب بمعنى مفروضة على وزني مفعولة وهي لغة الشيء الموجب أو الشيء الموجب والمقطوع. So fara'id is the plural of fariida, and it is something which is essentially yaqini. Something which is certain. You're assigning and you're determining something that is certain. That is the linguistic meaning of uh, al-fara'id. And the reason why yani, fiqh al-fara'id is called that is because it, it doesn't change. Because these are specified, determined sums of wealth that is distributed in a, in a specific set way. فَرَضَهَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined in the Qur'an. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يُصِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أُولَادِكُمْ لِذَكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِ الْمُنْثَيَيْنِ فَإِنْ نِسَاءً فَوْقَ ثَنْتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلُثَا مَا تَرَكْ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَنْ نِصْفَ And so you see these, what, these numbers, half, third, it's very, very what? Specific, it doesn't change. لا تتبدل. طيب. And so we have 
uh, this is essentially what the term fard means and that's why it's used from uh, based of, upon its linguistic sense fixed طيب اما في الاصطلاح اسوء اصطلاحا فهو العلم بقسمه المواريث فقها وحسابا he gave a simple definition it is to have knowledge of how the uh, estate of the one who passes away how is it distributed so when somebody passes away he leaves out he leaves behind wealth طيب uh, when a person dies of course he leaves behind wealth he leaves behind that which he left right this is called the estate this wealth is called the estate and Arabic we call it the mirath or the mawarith طيب or the tariqa tariqa طيب he leaves behind an estate how we distribute this estate طيب is what the science deals with how we distribute this estate this estate between his inheritors is what the science deal with, deals with and it's this ilm it deals with it from two angles this ilm it deals with this this distribution from two angles fiqhan the fiqh part of it and there's a mathematical part of it so there's a fiqh part of it and there's a mathematical part of it and the best way to explain this is with an example طيب. a man died a man passed away and he left behind a, a wife and a son that's all he left behind so his inheritors are going to be what his wife and his son what is the wife going to get the wife is going to get an, an eighth and the son is going to get that which remains that is fiqh that is the fiqh so when i say to you a man died and he left behind a wife and a son what does the wife get the wife gets an eighth what does the son get the son gets whatever remains whatever is left behind once that eighth is given to the to the wife that is the fiqh what about the mathematical side of it what about the hisab side of it that is i'll give you the same example a man died and he left behind eight thousand pounds he left behind how much money he left behind eight thousand pounds distribute that between his two inheritors the wife and the son so now you apply the mathematics and you say what one eighth multiplied by eight thousand is what one thousand that is what the wife gets the son gets that which remains eight thousand minus one thousand is seven thousand the wife the, hus- the son gets 7,000. That is the hisab. And that's all ilm al-fara'il is. So you learn the principle of the fiqh, and then you apply it with the mathematical application, which is the example. So the, so, so the fiqh is to understand what this person gets an eighth, that person gets what remains. Another example, method. We have uh, a, a woman dies. A woman dies, and she leaves her husband and her full sister. She leaves behind her husband and her full sister. The fiqh is that her husband gets a half, and her full sister gets a, gets a half. Tayyib. That's the fiqh, the hisab. Say a man left behind six thousand pounds. He left behind six thousand pounds. The husband, or the woman, left behind six thousand pounds. The husband will get three thousand pounds, and the wife will get, uh, and the full sister will get three thousand pounds. That's the hisab, and that's how it is. So you learn these principles, you learn the fiqh, and then you apply it uh, with the mathematics because of the in, in the distribution of the wealth that remains. طيب. So that is essentially what fiqh is. Fiqh al faraid is طيب. Is really nothing more hard there's really nothing difficult about it as long as the principles are clear in your head uh, the application will become very very simple what is the benefit the new author Rahim Allah mentions the faida the benefit behind studying the science the benefit is very simple that you are going to give every person his rights the right that he deserves the right that he is entitled to from this wealth that has been left behind you give it to him in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for us to give it in the Quran, and commanded us to do so in the Quran. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what? He said, الحق الفرائض بأهلها. الحق الفرائض بأهلها. Give the fara'id, the, the, the portions that they are right to, that they, they are entitled to, from the wealth of the person that passed away, give it to them. The inheritors have a right to this wealth. And so by you distributing it in the correct fashion, طيب, and by knowing this knowledge, we will be able to distribute it in the correct fashion, such that everybody gets what they are entitled to حُكْمُهُ what is the ruling of learning this science the ruling of learning the science is simple فَرْضُ كفاية. it is a communal obligation إِذَا قَامَ بِهِ بَعْضَ الْبَعْضَ أو إِذَا قَامَ بِهِ مَا يَكْفِي سَقَطَ الْفَرْضُ عَنْ بَقِيَةِ النَّاسِ if some of the population come with it then the obligation is uplifted from everybody else and the sin is uplifted from everybody else so حُكْمُهُ فَرْضُ كفاية. it's ruling learning it studying it it's فَرْضُ كفاية. And, uh, and it has come in, uh, in some ahadith that the first science that will be uplifted from the people is علم الفرائض طيب and you find that many people don't learn the science it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's something that's very very sad طيب that many people especially in the English language if you, if you were to go and look at online to try and find 
content related to it. Fiqh al-Fara'id, it's not that much compared to like Fiqh al-Salah, Fiqh al-Zakah. It's not that much. طيب. And so it's very important that we learn this science bin the ta'ala. طيب. Remember I mentioned the example of a man who left behind what? How many? How much did I say he left behind? Um, 8,000 pounds, right? طيب. And I said that he left behind a, uh, uh, a wife and a son, right? And I said the wife gets an eighth and the son gets a, the remainder, right? However, we don't straight away jump to giving uh, the warithin, the inheritors, their wealth. We don't do that. Rather, there are things that have to be done beforehand before we actually go to distributing this wealth in the correct form or distributing this estate in the correct form. And these steps that we do beforehand, it is hukuk, rights that are entitled uh, from that estate that the person left behind. These rights have to be fulfilled first and foremost before we actually even go into dealing with taqsim al tariqa before we actually go into dealing with the distribution of this wealth among the inheritors before we actually go and deal with that there are things that have to be applied first and foremost and that's what the author rahimah Allah ta'ala deals with in the next chapter he says al huquq al mutaalliqa bi tariqa wa bayan al muqaddami minha so he mentions the rights that are uh, connected to the tariqa the tariqa is essentially the estate that which the person leaves behind wa bayan al muqaddami minha and that which is to be put forth and these huquq they are how many? They are five. The author Rahimah Ta'ala says, الحقوق المتعلقة بالتالي كتير خمسة مرتبة كالتالي أو خمسة مرتبة كالتالي. They are five. The حقوق that are uh, uh, linked to the uh, the تالي كتير. The estate that a person left behind is five. And we can group them by uh, with an acronym. تدوم. We can group, group them with the acronym تدوم. تدوم. The تاء refers to تجهيز الميت. مو أنا تجهيز الميت. The cost of uh, or the expenses. Behind the funeral cost or the funeral cost, the funeral expenses, you could say. So, number one, ta, tajheez al mayyit. That is, tadum, the ta from tadum is referring to the what? Tajheez al mayyit. The dal refers to two things. Duyun muwathaqa birrahm and duyun mursala. Duyun muwathaqa birrahm and duyun mursala. So, we have the wow, the wow deals with the wasiyah, and the meme deals with the mirath. So, you learn this, this acronym, tadum. It will be very simple for you to understand. Someone asks you, what are the rights that one must fulfill when it comes to the, uh, the, the distribution of the money in terms of the estate before you actually even go into taqseem at tadika? You have to do with five things. The fifth thing is what, you, is what, what we did when I said to you the example. Uh, when I said to you, um, a, man, a man died and he left behind a wife and a son and he had 8,000 pounds. So essentially this 8,000 pounds, when I distributed it, I said the, the, the son gets 7,000 or the, the wife gets 1,000, which is an eighth. And the, and the sun gets that, that which remains, which is 7,000. I did this, what? After I took into consideration the four previous huquq. After I took into consideration the four previous huquq, which is the ta, the two dals, and the well. So what is mu'anu tajheez al mayyid? When the person passes away, he's going to be buried, right? He has to be washed. He has to be shrouded. He has to be um, preyed upon. He has to be buried, right? And all that takes, what? Expenses, especially in this country. There are what? It, take, it takes money. It, it, yeah, uh, it's costly. In some countries back home, when in the Arabian lands, it's free, or the government takes control of the money, or the government pays for that. But in this country and in the West, generally you have to pay for it. And so, that, where is that money going to come from? Where is that expense going to come from? It's going to be taken from the tarika, the estate that this person left behind. That's the first haq. And so, you pay from his wealth that he left behind what he is going to be shrouded with, washed with. How he's going to be preyed upon, the cost of the burial, the cost of the coffin, and so on. طيب. That is the first one. And the author of Allah mentions this. مُؤَلْ مُتَجْهِيزِ الْمَيِّتِ مِنْ ثَمَنِ مَا تَغْزِيلِهِ وَكَفَنِهِ وَحَنُوطِهِ وَأُجْرَةُ غَازِلِهِ وَأُجْرَةِ غَازِلِهِ وَحَافِرِ قَبْرِهِ Also the cost, the, 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 the wage that you're going to pay to the one who's going to wash him. The, the wage that you're going to pay, whether it be a masjid or an organization or an individual, that a person is going to bury him. And so on. You have to pay all of these costs. All of the costs related to the funerals. It has to be taken out from his, from his wealth. First and foremost, that's number one. أما عند الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى يفعل وهذا مذهبنا طيب ابن عثيمين زن حنبلي. As we are Shafi'i, right? That's what the Shafi'i what they do. They put the Dain, the Dal before the, before the Ta'. They put the Dal before the Ta'. So they put the Duyun before the, before Mu'an and Tashiz and Ma'id. As I said, I won't bore you. I won't bore you with Khilaf. Generally speak, when it comes to Fiqh al-Farad, Ikhwan, there isn't that much Khilaf in this, uh, in this chapter, in this, in this ilm. There isn't that much Khilaf. But there is sometimes يعني, khilaf here and there. طيب. And as I said, I won't bore you with that khilaf. You, do, you don't have to, you can ignore what I've just said. طيب. We'll just stick with what the Musannif mentioned. And so the first 
thing that we consider is tajheez al mayyid the cost and the expenses of the funeral. Everything attached to the funeral. We pay off the expenses from that, from that wealth. Tayyib. And so an example. Let's say somebody left behind 100 pound. Somebody died and he left behind 100 pound. And the cost of his funeral was 100 pound. So we, we, we take that 100 pound and we use it for his funeral expenses and then nobody will get anything because there will nothing nothing will remain and so nobody none of his family none of that none of, none of his inheritors will gain any any wealth or any wealth or any uh, distribution there won't be any distribution there is no money to distribute we spent it all on the tajheez al mayit طيب that's an example number two al huquq al mutaalliqa bi ayn al tarika so there are now rights that are linked to the uh, estate itself the wealth that's left behind itself for example kad diyun al muwathaqati bil rahn what is the diyun al muwathaqati bil rahn al diyun al muwathaqati bil rahn is a dain, a debt that is attached to some sort of pledge. Example, let's say I take 100 pounds from person X and he says to me, give me a pledge, i.e. give me something that I can hold on to, like give me something that I can hold on to, a mortgage you could say, give me something I can hold on to, that such that if you're unable to pay that debt, I can then take that rahan that you have given me, which maybe let's say I, I gave you a ring, like as my rahan, as my a mortgage for you for the for the wealth that I've taken behind that I've taken from you this 100 pound I've taken from you I've given you a ring in exchange طيب, that if I'm unable to pay back this 100 pound you are to take that uh, ring and to use it however you wish in terms of uh, the 100 pound طيب, that's something which is called الرحم. if there are duyun debts like that they have to be dealt with secondly they have to be dealt with first and foremost after you've dealt with the funeral expenses طيب. Let's say you've dealt with that now, alhamdulillah. طيب. And now you deal with this deen. Al-duyun al-muta'alliqa al-duyun al-muthaqati bil-rahan. And this is haqqun muta'alliqun bi'ayn al-tariqa. طيب. Example. Let's say the same man we said who left 100 pound in the first example. Let's say he left now 200 pound. It cost 100 pound to deal with his uh, to deal with his um, uh, to, to deal with his funeral expenses. And it cost 100 pound to deal with this Dain al muthaqati bil rahn To deal with this Dain al muthaqati bil rahn Wa alladhi fihi rahn Method And this is just an example And we call it generally al duyun al muta'alliqati bi ayn al-tarika Duyun debts that are dealing with Or that are linked with the uh, The essence of the estate wealth itself Or the essence of the estate itself We say that that cost also £100 So we take that £100 From the wealth that he left behind And we put it to deal with that now what's left? Nothing. And so the warith, the, 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 the warithun don't get anything. The warithun don't get anything. Because there's nothing left. That's the second haqq. The third haqq is al duyun al mursala And this is a, this can be mentioned, or this can be put in the category of al huquq al muta'alliqati bi al mayyid Rights that are attached to the, the soul itself, i.e. upon the person who died. And these are duyun mursala For example, uh, zakat. Remember, we have de debts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dainullahi haqqu an yuqda. Right? And that's pertaining to, pertaining to the siyam, the hadith, right? Likewise, it apply, applies to the zakat. So if I didn't pay zakat, طيب, and I have wealth that I left behind, that wealth needs to be what? Needs to be used to pay off my zakat. Likewise, the yunul khalq. I also owe, may owe somebody debt. طيب, a, a, a debt that doesn't have a, a rahan attached to it. For example, I took from this person 200 pounds, qardan. طيب, and I died and I left wealth. From that wealth, I need to use to satisfy that person and to pay off that debt. And we know the Messenger of when he passed away, he left behind some debt which had to be paid off. طيب. عليه الصلاة والسلام. And so this is the third haqq that has to be dealt with before we even actually go into thinking about distributing that both are behind between the inheritors. Number four. الوصية الجائزة. And so we can mention an example for the third one. Let's continue with the example that we mentioned previously. Let's say this person now left behind 300 pounds. The first 100 pounds, he went to the Tajiz al mayyid The second 100 pounds, he went to the uh, went to the Duyun al Muta'alliqati bil Rahan, the Hukuk al Muta'alliqati bi Asl or bi Aini al Tariqa. The third one is Al Hukuk al Muta'alliqati bi Dimmat al mayyid For example, he went to dealing with my uh, personal debts like. The debt, the debt that I own to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Like my zakat or my kafarat طيب, And so on Or al-adamiyin ka al-qard Methala And that was 100 pound as well So 100 went there, 100 went there, 100 went there I have now nothing left And so the warithun don't get anything 
The fourth one, الوصيه الجائزة, a permissible will. A permissible will. What is that? The author, رحمه الله تعالى, he said, وهي ما كانت بالثلث فأقل لغير وارث. So the wasiya al jaiza is my will. What I advise that my some of my wealth be given to somebody who is not actually a warith. So there are two conditions here with the wealth. Number one, that it has to be to a non warith. It has to be given to a non warith, a person who's not going to inherit. For example, my best friend. Or for example, my cousin, my distant cousin, for example. Or for example, um uh the king, for example. Anybody, my neighbor. They're not going to inherit, طيب. and so I give them the wasiya. I advise that some of my wealth be given to them. How much of that wealth? It has to be one less, one third or less. It can't be anything greater than a, a third. It cannot be greater than anything a, a it cannot be greater than a third. طيب. What if now I want to give more than a third or a third to my wasiya or to my warith, to a warith? So, for example, I have two inheritors and I want my wealth to be given to one of the inheritors. So I say I want a third of my wealth to be given to one of my inheritors. Then this can occur. However, you have to have the permission of all of the other warithin. All of the other warithin. وقد وقع هذا أن هذا يقع كثيرا. مثل ذلك مثلا you find that some brothers uh, they come together. Three brothers come together. Their father passed away. And they say that we're going to forego. We're going to give up our حقوق, our rights. So that the wasiyah of my father can be given. And we can give this wealth to one of the to the one whom he advised the wealth to be given to. But however, that's the condition that has to be met, uh, that has to be met which is that has to be done with the permission of the other inheritors, of all of the other inheritors. And the the uh, the wasiya has to be done in what? Uh, and the uh, wasiya generally is supposed to be written and it's supposed to be shahidin and there are ahkam pertaining to it. You might touch upon it later, inshallah ta'ala. طيب. Likewise, uh, when when you find that the wasiya is going to a warith, the other warithin have to agree upon it and they have to also have a written testimony for that. طيب. So this is wasiya. So let's say now, for example, I go back to my previous example. Now I have 400 pounds that I left behind. I died, I left 400 pounds. The first 100 went to the funeral expenses. The second 100 went to my adyun al mutaliqati bi ayn al tariqa. My third 100 went to the adyun al mursala. Adyun al mutaliqa or al hukuk al mutaliqa bi bi dhimmat al mayid. And my fourth 100, I advise 100 pounds to go to my best friend. Taib. So now I have how much left? Nothing. All of my uh, money has been spent on the four issues on the four points that I that I gave or on these four on these four rights and so the the, the warithin they don't get anything the warithin they don't get anything and my wasiya was less than a third if you look at it right I gave one fourth of my wealth to one fourth is less than a third right think about it one fourth is 25 percent one third is 33.3 percent which is greater one third is greater so one fourth I can give it to my best friend and so when I've done all of these four points I've come when I've gone through all these four uh, key key um, key points, key حقوق, key rights. طيب. I have nothing left, and so the warithin they don't get anything. They don't get anything. And then the fifth one is at ith. So when everything is done, when these four points are considered, now I can go into now distributing what remains to the rest of the to the rest of the inheritors or to those who have the right to inherit. And the author rahimahullah, after mentioning those points, he gives you a beautiful example. He gives you a beautiful example. He also highlights to you why. The hikmah behind why the wasiyah goes ahead of the word. If you might be thinking right now after I mentioned the example, oh, that's not kind of fair. Why is the best friend who I gave a wasiyah to getting 25% but the word think they don't get anything? Is that fair? Is that not fair? There's a hikmah behind why the wasiyah always is to be put ahead of the actual division of the of the earth, as we'll see in this example. So the author gives an example. He says a woman died. A woman died. And she left behind money she left behind money and he never said what kind of money first rather he said to you the costs of the حقوق that he mentioned and so he said ماتت امرأة a woman died طيب أن يموت ميت ويبلغ ما يتعلق بتركته بتركته كالتالي and so what we have to uh, how we're gonna fill all the cost of these rights is this 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 and this and we he gave an example of a woman who passed away ماتت امرأة وعليها مئة ريال مؤن تجهيزه أو مؤن تجهيزها that 100 ريال is the cost of her funeral expenses 100 ريال is the cost of her ديون الموثق بالرهن 100 ريال أو 100 pound I'm saying ريال but I should say pound but he of course is Saudi Arabian so he used ريال 100 ريال دين ليس فيه رهن أي ديون مرسلة 100 ريال 
وصية جائزة يعني permissible وصية and she left behind a husband and a full sister so let's look at the thiqr remember we said uh, علم الفرائض the definition of it is what it is العلم بقسمة المواريث فقها وحسابا فقها what does the husband get a half what does the أخت الشقية get a half but remember we said that 100 pound went to her funeral costs 100 pound went to her دون الموثقة بالرهن 100 pound went to دون المرسلة 100 pound went to a وصية جائزة now the author رحمه الله gives examples of how much money she actually left behind he says فإذا خلفت 100 ريال فقط صرفت مو عن تجهيزها وترك الباقي if she left behind 100 pound then the first 100 pound that 100 pound has to be first spent in what? in the تجهيز الميت in the preparation and the expenses of the of that dead body of the, the, fu the funeral expenses and so what does the husband get in this case? nothing what does the wife get in this case? or what does the sister get in this case? nothing صحيح طيب what if she left behind 200? the 100 will go to the first حق which is تجهيز الميت and 100 will go to the right of ماذا? it will go to the right of الدوء الموثقة so what's left behind? nothing so what does the husband get? nothing what does the شقيقة أخت الشقيقة what does the sister get? nothing طيب what if she left behind 300? 300 pounds. Then we say 100 goes to the Mu'an Tajiz. 100 goes to the Adiyun and Muthaqati bin Rahan. And 100 goes to Adiyun and Muthaqah. And so again, Turik al Baqi, there's nothing left for the rest. What if she left behind 600 pounds? Then we say here 300 goes to what we mentioned, Tajiz al Mayyid. 300 goes to what we mentioned previously, Adiyun and Muthaqati bin Rahan. Sorry, 100 goes. To, uh, apologies, my, my brain is not working properly here. 100 goes to Tajiz al Mayyid. 100 goes to الديون المثاقة بالرهن 100 goes to the ديون المرسلة and then now what do we do we go on to the وصية the وصية comes before the إرث and so the وصية we say 100 goes to the وصية the advice the وصية جائزة and it's permissible one quarter is less than a third and so we can do that it's permissible and it's to أغير وأرث it's to the best friend or to the neighbor طيب so that 100 goes to him what's left behind 200 what is 600 minus 400 400 went to the حقوق each one 100 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 400 600 minus 400 is 200 and so now I said the husband gets a half and أخت الشقيق gets a half do the hisab 200 times a half is 100 so 100 goes to the husband 200 times a half is equal to 100 so 100 goes to the sister and so by that I have I have completely what? I have distributed it equally and everybody has got their حقوق everybody has got their got their rights والله تعالى أعلم مصطفى بإذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته